Hello my friends, Gene from Regular Guy Mountain Biking. Well guess what? The entry level mountain bike is finally complete. So in this video, what we'll be discussing is how the controls got set up. Okay, we'll talk about the pedals that I put on the bike. And basically, oh, I wanna talk about the, uh, the tubeless tires and how I got that all set up. That was a little bit tricky. And really just kind of put a bow on this build and get it done so that the next video that you see uh, will be me riding this bike and actually testing out the new upgrades that we put on it. So let's jump into things and show you what we got. If you're interested in checking out or maybe even purchasing some of the parts that I used in this bike upgrade, take a look at the kit that I put together just for this video series. You'll find a link in the description of this video. Thanks so much. Okay folks, once again, Gene from Regular Guy Mountain Biking, thank you so much for tuning in. So the first thing we're gonna cover will be the pedals. It's quick, it's easy, we have a lot to talk about, so let's just jump into the topic of the pedals. Now, anyone that watches this channel already knows that I'm a big, big fan of the Catalyst pedals from Pedaling Innovations. They're the pedals of choice for me. I really like them, they do the job, they're, they're worth the cost, and I just thoroughly recommend them big time. I also realized that they're not the only pedal in the world, and there are a lot of very, very good pedals out there on the market. So I urge you, look around, test different pedals out, but please get rid of the plastic crap pedals that come on these bikes. They're actually kind of dangerous because there's a good chance that you'll slide off these things if they get wet. They're not really well designed. The only good thing these pedals are for is to put on the bike if you ever wanna let someone test out the bike because you're gonna sell it. That's it. These things are horrible. Get rid of those pedals and get yourself a good set of pedals. Do you have to spend as much money as I like to spend on the Catalyst pedals? No, you don't have to. I love these pedals. I feel they're worth the cost, but you don't have to, uh, especially on an entry level bike. Maybe they're overkill, though these red, these red ones look absolutely gorgeous on this build. Just, it's time to upgrade the pedals and I do feel it's, it's gonna be worth your money. So take a look at the different ones on the market. I'll try to link some in the store that I have on all the different upgrades I did for the bike, but please, please upgrade the pedals and get rid of those plastic ones that may be on your bike right now. So let's move up to the handlebars and talk about the controls right now. And again, just like with the pedals, let's do kind of the easy thing. Let's talk about the grips. A big reason why you might wanna upgrade the grips, besides the obvious comfort, is because the grips that come on these bikes generally don't lock on. They're just rubber that just slide over the bars, okay, and they, they will, turn and spin on the bars over time and sometimes even slide off. So this is not an expensive upgrade at all. The Pacific Northwest ones, these red ones look gorgeous on this bike. They're very easy to install and they come in multiple colors so you can kind of deck out your bike and make it look cool. But definitely consider upgrading the, um, the grips if you just have those little rubber ones that slide on the bars, they're just really not great. And this is not an expensive upgrade to do that is certainly worth doing. Now let's get into the meat of the video over here. Why I place my controls where I place my controls. So the first thing we'll talk, first thing we'll talk about will be what I have on the bars. Remember earlier, way, way earlier, it's taken a while to get this video series done, but way back in time, I had the, uh, the, the levers that were all in one. Remember it was the brake and the shifter, okay, on both sides. And the big issue I had with those was how, how big they were and how I could not do the braking that I like to do. When everything was in one lever, you had no ability to position things where you want them to be because the brake and the shifter was all in one. So having more flexibility and the fact that I didn't wanna use the multiple rings in the front derailleur in the front anymore were the reasons why I wanted to get rid of the, the multiple um, combination levers up front. To do that, remember I installed these, uh, these Avid brake levers. So we will find out on the test ride whether or not I'm getting more braking power out of them, but I've certainly gained the flexibility of positioning the brake levers where I want. Where do I want my brake levers? I personally like my brake levers in pretty far. The reason for that 
is because I only brake with index finger braking. These two little guys right here, these guys stop the bike. The reason why these guys stop the bike is because now all the other fingers are on the bars, okay? Here's how I see it. Certainly, you wanna stop the bike, but just as importantly, you don't want your hands falling off the bars. So I only do index finger braking, but what that means is I need the ability to move my brake lever in far enough so that I only have the index finger grabbing on that lever. So my brake levers go in pretty far so that I can use index finger braking only. Now, once I get those brake levers in a position that I like, again, so that only my index fingers are really being used to, to activate them, there are small little grub nut screws in here on each brake lever that'll adjust how far in and out the brake lever goes. So I like to pull that lever in a bit so that it's not out so far, my finger has to reach all the way out there to get to that. Besides the fact that it's uncomfortable, you will start getting some hand, your know, arm pump, your finger will get sore after a while. So you want that lever in pretty far. So let's continue with the controls and work from our left side and move over to the right and we'll talk about the dropper seat post lever. So for me, I really, really like the specific Northwest dropper seat post lever. Uh, a big reason for me liking it so much is the fact that it is solid. It is, it's built very, very strong and it gives you some flexibility on where it will fit on the actual bars. Here's what I mean by that. Where I like to position the dropper seat post lever is in, not a whole lot, but a decent amount. I just want that sticking out just a little bit. Again, think about when you're riding the bike. You're not dropping and raising the seat post anywhere near as much as you're braking or using the, um, the shifter. It just needs to be there so you can snag it real quick, okay, and, and have it do its thing, and, and then you want it out of the way. You don't want your thumb getting caught on it. You want it out of the way, all right? So the Pacific Northwest seat post lever, it has a regular clamp so I can move it back and forth on the bars, but then what I found was even when I moved it out as far as I could move it out, it was hitting against the brake lever. Now the Pacific Northwest actual lever system gives you the ability to move it back and forth, even more refining the position on the actual clamp itself. So now let's move over from the left of the bars all the way over to the right of the bars and we'll finish things up with the shifter. Just like with all my other controls, I do like the shifter controls in a bit. Again, the theme is keeping these controls out of my way, the brake levers only there where I need them to be, my goal is to hold on to these bars. And when you're doing some more aggressive riding, you'll understand that things are gonna be shaking. So you wanna keep good grip of the bars. So I also keep my shifters in just enough so that I can just get to them with my thumbs. One of the things you'll need to do is adjust the width of your handlebars. Now, the way I recommend doing that is getting yourself, or maybe you have an extra old set of grips that have the lock-ons on both sides. All right, you can find a junk pair someplace, but the reason why I like these is because I can put these on the bars, and since there's no end over here, I can slide them in further, uh, okay, in and out where I need them to be and adjust them when I'm riding. Now, please understand, one of the scariest things you can do is ride with a set of bars without the end plugs in. That's just dumb. You can get impaled, you can get seriously hurt. So I'm in no way telling you to go out on your trails and mountain bike without these end caps. Even worse with this in and having that piece of metal exposed. But what I am saying is ride up and down the driveway, maybe down the street a little bit, and you can move this, these, these, uh, these grips in and out and find the optimum location for the grips. If you do really need to test the bike out on the trails, go and put a cap in on either side, do the smart thing and be safe. But that's how I like to adjust the width of my bars by putting on a spare set of these. Okay, obviously these would not be on and I'll move them in and out. Very easy to do when I'm actually out there on the trails or on the driveway or whatever and find exactly the width that I like of my bars. Something else we should talk about 
is the, uh, the handlebar stem. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because a subscriber put a post out uh, in one of the videos and it made a lot of sense. When I changed the bars and put them back on the bike, I put a set of riser bars on and previously they were a set of flat bars. And he had mentioned that when you do that, the longer stem might feel a little weird with the bars raised. And he's right. So something to think about when you put on different bars, especially if you're going from flat to riser bars, is you may have to adjust the stem. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. I'm still using the original stem on here, but it is a, a longer stem and it's also a riser stem on top of a riser bar. I don't know if I really need that much. So there's a very good chance that I'll be putting a different stem on there, but that's not an upgrade. That's a personal taste. You have to adjust the bike and set it up to your needs. Where this is going is understand that sometimes when you do an upgrade to a bike part, you may have to also change another part to accommodate for the piece you just put on the bike. So I may have to put a different stem on this bike because of the type of bars that I just installed. And last but not least, let's talk about this, uh, the upgrade from uh, tubed tires to tubeless. This is something that I don't think I would recommend anyone doing an entry level mountain bike upgrade. Let me make sure I, I make that clear. When I took the original tires off this bike, I found out that these rims are not tubeless ready rims. So a non-tubeless ready rim generally doesn't have, well, first of all, it doesn't have the proper tape on the, on the actual rim to make it um, not waterproof, but you know what I'm saying, the sealant won't leak through. You have to have a special tape on there. I happen to use the, that Gorilla tape to do the job, but whatever, you need to have special tape on the rim but you also have to have special um, sidewalls, all right, where the actual bead will lock into the rim itself. These rims are not designed to do that. So what you do to try to compensate for that is you put a bit more tape on the inside, um, on the rim itself to build up the wall so that will help lock in the bead. That's a pain. This was not easy to do. The V tires look great. Um, they're going to do a wonderful job out in the trails, so it has nothing to do with the tire itself. These are tubeless ready tires, and I'm sure they would snap on and work great on tubeless ready rims. But in order to put them on these rims, I had to do some work with the tape, and it wasn't fun. So personally, if you have rims that are not tubeless ready, unless you want to be a little adventurous, I'm not saying you shouldn't, if you don't, I mean, if you want to try, try, okay? It's your own bike, do what you want, but it's not that easy. And it was a little tricky for me to get this to work. I had to take the tires off a couple times, add some more tape, redo it again. It was a bit of a pain. So I would actually say that this would not be an upgrade that I would recommend an entry level person to do on their bike. I would say certainly upgrade your tires and the V tires are great and you can use tubeless ready tires on non tubeless rims, that's okay. But you probably wanna keep that tube in there just to make the whole process of upgrading the tires a heck of a lot easier than what I had to go through. So that's gonna do it for the bike build. It's officially built. It looks absolutely gorgeous, right? We've got um, upgrades all over the place. The next thing we have to do is actually get this bike out in the trails and start talking about how these upgrades feel. And I'm really, really excited to do that. Remember, if you wanna learn about any of the parts that I've used on this bike build, there's a link in the description and you can go to that page and you'll see all the different upgrades and who I got the parts from. We had a lot of very generous companies help me uh, with this bike build. But the next video you will see is me riding this bike in the trails and we'll be discussing all the upgrades and how they worked, were they worth it, and uh, which ones I would definitely recommend you doing. Okay, keep the party on the pedals, my friends. Thank you so much for watching and I guess we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.